There are dire new warnings today from United Nations officials that the humanitarian efforts in Gaza are on the brink of total collapse. As fighting intensifies in the south, the U.N. agency on the ground there says the strip is now reaching a point of no return. While the humanitarian chief says plans for relief are in tatters and that, quote, we do not have a humanitarian operation in southern Gaza that can be called by that name anymore. The U.N. Secretary General is also sounding the alarm, warning of a complete breakdown in public order. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is calling out Israel for not doing more to reduce civilian casualties, saying there's a gap between the intent to protect civilians and the actual results that we're seeing on the ground. This comes as over the past day, videos and images have been circulating, showing dozens of Palestinian men kneeling on the street, stripped to their underwear and blindfolded while being detained by Israeli soldiers. In one photo shared on social media, a group of men can be seen wearing what appears to be nothing but underwear as they kneel in a line, surrounded by armed soldiers in full combat gear. NBC News has not independently verified when these videos and images were taken. Joining me now is Hani al Madum, Director of Philanthropy at the United Nations Relief and Work Agency. It's good to see you, Hani. Um, and I'm glad that you were able to come on. Uh, I know you've been through a lot and lost a lot in this war, and including many family members. Um, but we were alerted that perhaps someone in that group, and we're going to show that picture again, is a member of your family. Can you tell us if that is accurate, and if so, who he is? <laughs> Yeah, Joy, this is my little brother, my baby brother, Mahmoud. He is uh, 32 years old. He was taken from his home. He was playing with uh, his two daughters, Noor and Sham. And he is 100 percent and a full time civilian. A lot of the people in the image there, their family members. And they've also taken my nephew that you see him in a different picture. And the only reason we know this is because the IDF released this footage to share and to show the world how they humiliate Palestinians. They are meant for domestic consumption, to show the Israelis that, hey, we're arresting Palestinians. Sadly, they're dubbing them as combatants. And this is just a sad, cruel joke, because none of the folks in this image have anything to, anything to do with fighting. They were taken from their homes with their spouses and daughters. They're sheltering, seeking uh, safety. And sadly, that's, you know, that's my little brother. And it's shocking because he's not involved in anything. He can't, you know, he can't run two meters, unfortunately, but they still dub him as a combatant. And it's sad because you feel violated. You know, this is your baby brother and you've been meeting with people high in our government here in the U.S. And somehow I feel like I failed him. Well, you certainly did not. You are doing your best to try to get the information out about what's happening there. Where where was your brother and your cousins and et cetera? What part of Gaza were they in? They were in northern Gaza in an area called Mashru'a Beit Lahia, the Beit Lahia project. This is our the third home that my family have moved to. Our other home was destroyed an hour and a half before the truce that killed my younger brother Majid. May his soul rest in peace. Last time we spoke, I had three brothers, Joy. Now I have two. Yeah. I miss him. I try to send him messages in WhatsApp now and then, and I want to share location as we used to. And he's gone an hour and a half before the truce. The home is gone. Four-story buildings I go on with him. My family is now homeless. They found shelter inside my great uncle's home. And even then, the troops came in looking for them and humiliated them in front of their families and their kids. And this is insane because this is like meant to humiliate the Palestinians. And somehow the Israelis are convincing themselves that buys them safety. I doubt that our history shows that this has ever worked. And I'm broken for my brother. He was put stripped in the cold. They put him in the beach for a few hours. They're after, you know, just uh, insulting them, taking pictures of them and mocking them to insult their manhood and showing their buddies and various Israeli telegram groups the images of those civilians. And it's unfortunate. It really is. Um, I, I want to read a, this is a, I'll read part of this statement um, from the, the IDF. They've said over the past day, IDF and ISA forces apprehended hundreds of wanted suspects throughout the Gaza Strip during combat in Shajaya, Jabalia, and Khan Yunis. IDF troops apprehended hundreds of terror suspects. These suspects were transported by two security forces in Israel for further questioning. Um, they are saying that the people that they are detaining are terrorist operatives and suspects. Um, what do you make of that? 
Uh, that's if they were really suspects. This, these people were released within 10 hours of their detention. If they had any grain of truth in that statement, those folks would not be released. I'm happy my family is released. The Israelis know these are not fighters. They've grabbed people as old as my dad, 72 years old, as young as, as, young as Omar, he's 13 years old. And it just feels like, what can we do about this? This is just really unfortunate because our family members are not involved in anything. I vouch for every single one of them, our neighbors, that particular area where they say Jabalia is. I know a lot of these young men, they're trying to make a living somehow. My, my nephew tried to go to Europe to find a better job. He almost drowned in the Mediterranean. His mom pushed him to come back to Gaza, and now she regrets that decision. Can you imagine Joy being my mom? She buried a child, yeah. took her a week to get to their bodies, and then now they round up her kid to a known place, and then they humiliated her husband, who's a teacher of 40 years. This is a bit much for our family, but yet we stand yeah. to tell their stories. Uh, and I cannot, I cannot imagine, and I'm so sorry, and uh, my deepest condolences to your mom. Yes, she and your family have been through a lot. Um, we just had uh, a U.N. vote uh, recently, again, uh, calling for a ceasefire. The United States vetoed it uh, in the Security Council. Uh, Great Britain abstained. What do you make of these votes in the United Nations, the efficacy of them, the point of them at this point, knowing that the United States will veto them regardless? Do you think there is a point to the, the continuation of the United Nations process, or do you think that it is effective in any way? You've heard the Secretary General call for Article Number 99, you know, because this is a desperate humanitarian situation. The organization I support and travel the country to generate resources for is UNRWA is in a very desperate situation. They're running out of funds. They cannot safely deliver aid. If they have the fuel, it's a very chaotic operation. They're asking for a ceasefire, a durable one. They're asking for more aid, for funding. They're saying, you know, everything is collapsing, hospitals, you know, this is not sustainable. You know, this has been more than two months. Unfortunately, the case of politicians here in the U.S. looking at the Middle East and telling us, hey, we know what's good for you, despite the fact more than 17,000 Palestinians are dead, 7,000 children of whom are our children. It's just heartbreaking because it's just like these yeah. politicians here. And they love this country. I love America. But the politicians here have failed us and they have not heard our plight. And despite our effort, we try, we try, we try, but we feel we somehow overnight we are told we don't belong. Hani, um, uh, Hani Amadoun, um, you are always welcome here. Um, we appreciate your willingness to talk about so many things that are personally painful for you and your family and the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Of course.